warming up the motor, getting ready to head out into the night towards our next Greek island. All right, lines are up. We're gonna get blown off the dock, so that's good. Here. So first step is just to get out of the harbor, dump the back of the boat, halyards on, mainsail, cover is open, see if there's any wind out here. Not yet. Say goodbye to our sea turtle friends. So many sea turtles here in Argostoli. Little bit of a breeze. We'll motor a little further though so we can uh, don't have to tack our way out of the short channel, the narrow channel. And then we can, once we get the sails up, we can start sailing. We can yeah, just a uh, mile and a half. Might as well charge up the starting battery a bit anyway. Got a boat coming in here and another boat coming in right there. And the boat's anchored here, here, and here. A little bit more to the left so we don't hit this y'all more catch. So Parker Stoll is kinda nice looking at night. I like it. Sails are up. We are cruising. Five knots. Awesome. Once we turn to the left. Start facing away from the lights and heading now into the Mediterranean Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea. Speed's slowing down a bit. So now we're wing on wing, sailing downwind, and next morning, tomorrow morning, we will wake up somewhere around here and then I'll turn the boat and we'll sleep another hour and we'll be here hopefully 6 or 7 a.m. before all the tourist boats get there. Cool. Well, I slept for a couple hours but we got here way faster than I expected so I had to wake up. Um, fortunately the swell and wind was uh, a bit stronger than I expected also and we're not going to be able to go to that anchorage I was planning on. So we'll sail a little further south and maybe find one that's more protected from the swell. Well, here we are. A little bit rolly, but we'll survive. It's like some nice blue water. It's big cliffs. Can't wait to see it in the morning. Here we are the next morning. Whoa. Big cliffs. We got a sea cave over there. Well, I went for a swim, it was pretty nice. Uh, not a whole lot of fish, but uh, some interesting boulders and stuff and a pretty cool cave over there. Now I'm on underway again. I might look into anchoring in this cove if it looks more mellow. The swell's kind of rolling in here. Unfortunately, I was gonna I was gonna stop on a few places on this coast, but there seems to be a bit of a of a swell, so I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna keep sailing south. nice sailing. Would have liked to hop between anchorages but the had a little bit too much swell and that kind of exposed coastline there. But we'll make some progress and then we'll uh, be in a whole new place to explore. Little wing on wing action here. It's 
sails are already getting kind of dirty. All right, it's the next day. How far have we gone? 1030, 106 nautical miles in almost 24 hours. Uh, last couple hours, we've slowed down to about one knot, but we were doing pretty good overnight. And we're still creeping along. You can see the bubbles moving by. We've, well, we sailed past the first island, Zan or something or other. And then we sailed along this one. I think we'll go, like this island has like, like three little fingers that go out. So I think we'll maybe go to the second or third little finger over there. Like, this is the one someone, I have a little mark there. So how to put that there, I don't know. Maybe someone told me about that spot, so I was gonna go there. But maybe I go here actually first because uh, that would be another day before I get there. I don't have a cruising guide for Greece. Maybe I should get one. So our wind's down to four knots, three and a half knots apparent. That's kind of from behind, so I think we can fly the spinnaker. Let's put this guy out. Now we're moving. The wind's come out. Oh! Those are whales. Heck yeah. Oh, they're beautiful. I love them. Come over. Oh. Oh my gosh, those are my first uh, Mediterranean whales. I don't know what whales they were. Maybe fin whales? One of them was like really white looking. So cool. Uh, unfortunately, I had the spinnaker out. <laughs> I'm single handed, so I can't try to jump in and swim with them. But they didn't seem to follow the boat. They just came up once and then they, I haven't seen them submerge, surface again. I haven't seen them surface again. Just once. Oh, that was lucky. So that's the first. I tried to jive the spinnaker and uh, it wrapped around the horse day. Not sure how I'm gonna untangle that. Well, I got that sorted, although I had to ease the, the halyard, so it's now the halyard's not all the way up. I don't have a winch to pull it up, so let's see if I can hide it behind the mainsail and pull it up the rest of the way. It's pretty, pretty tight though. Okay, I got the spinnaker sorted. Wind's a little bit on a broader reach instead of running, so uh, the spinnaker's a little further forward and the boom's a little bit more in. Uh, unfortunately, so the wind's picked up a bit, so it's kind of having trouble steering, so what I did is I I moved to my autopilot on the wind vane and I put the sea state mode like most sensitive and that seems to be holding it okay. It wasn't working with just the autopilot, it wasn't working with just the wind vane because neither one alone was quick enough, but this seems to be the trick here. Uh, obviously when you have the wind vane you just don't have much relative wind, you can see the flags hardly moving, so it's not quite enough to move that fast enough. But then again, the spinnaker has a lot of power. Um, and if the boat lean, rolls a little bit, it's gonna wanna pitch you right or left, gonna yaw you right or left. And uh, that little autopilot's gonna have trouble keeping up. And then this kind of uses the water, it's our speed, we have a lot of speed, so that'll force amplify the um, autopilot to move the tiller with a lot of power. So it goes, so it's powerful and fast. And I could, I need to put a second set of cleats back here, I think for the spinnaker so I can move it further, even faster. Cause plenty of power when we're going this fast. We're doing like six knots or something. So for the past three years, I've carried around this zero breeze air conditioner. I never actually bothered using it. I would have liked to use it plenty of times in the med, but uh, before my batteries weren't good enough, but now I got the lithium battery. And uh, I figured I'd give it a try. And oh my gosh, it feels so good. So my idea is I, I extend this hose and I pump it down underneath my blanket and just have a little cool area in there because I don't think it'll cool the whole boat. I also need to put the exhaust out this window because right now it's just putting the heat back into the boat. 
but this is promising. It still works. I just assumed that this thing had gotten after crossing an ocean, North Sea, the Bay of Biscay, countless other <laughs> ridiculous bodies of water. It would have stopped working by now. But, oh, that feels so nice. I think I have to turn it off now because my batteries are only at 50 something percent. This thing is drawing massive amps. Yeah, we're drawing eight amps, but also I'm producing eight amps. I'm drawing actually 16 amps, I think. 16 times uh, 12, yeah, that's a lot of power. All right, we're coming into town here. Working our way into Anchorage. A few other boats out there. Fancy. All right, I just dropped my anchor in. 20 or 30 feet of water? Oh, 36. It was 20 over there, so hopefully the anchor's in shallower water. But the cool thing about this new propeller I got is I can, it's a kind of power to actually properly back down on the anchor. Set it pretty good. My other prop just didn't have the gusto to do it. There we are. Just dragging into this wall here. Isn't that great? trip we got a little repair to make uh, this rope the sheathing split so it's been on my list to replace the main sheet traveler this is the thing that moves back and forth so you can control the angle of the, the main sail <clears throat> back and forth and then the sheet is for kind of up and down and for the most part I like this system I the only change I made is I relocated the, the cleats back here so I didn't have to reach around the Dodger when I put the Dodger in the original main sheet would have been here on the Cape Dory, but that kind of limits your solar panel ability. And this just kind of keeps the traveler and everything a little closer to the cockpit, so I don't have to go so far to adjust it. Oh, I also, I, I, I made this bag a while ago. It was supposed to hang on the one of the railings, but it would always just kind of like, heel, when the boat healed over, it would just kind of clump up. Uh, so I just screwed it into this uh, piece of wood here, and that just holds, you know, my flippers and mask and stuff that so it can dry out and has a mesh bottom and then a little sunbrella top to keep the UV from damaging everything or wearing it out too much. So we'll see how that works. I got a couple of swimsuits in there, my snorkel, my mask, my booties. So all that stuff tends to fall in the bottom of the cockpit lockers. So maybe this will keep it, you know, up and uh, easy to find where I need it in the cockpit. So this line is replaced. Thanks for watching. To next time when we sail through a thunderstorm and I get to an island and then the winds get so strong I get stuck there for a whole week, which is pretty great because I got to do a lot of wing foiling. Uh, if you like this video, maybe try to check out some of my other videos. There will be a link for one on the screen, there should be. I post videos twice a week sailing all around and make sure you're subscribed too. I'll see you guys next time.